and I saw this minion and then I said to Stuart Dolman has anyone ever fucked that minion? <laughs> and then I did it <laughs> and then I did it um, what, how long <laughs> how long would it take you to leave the show if I just got actually naked and like had sex with the minion but like really earnestly like I just laid on the ground and just every now and again went oh fuck Eight minutes. <laughs> Let's put it to the test. Uh, <laughs> Let's show next year, Greg fucks a minion. You get what you pay for. And the and the rule is it's a hundred bucks. But it, only if you leave in the first eight minutes. If you stay the whole time, it's free. <laughs> If you stay for the whole hour, it's a free show. <laughs> and you can walk away and go, well, I got that for free. <laughs> what a bargain. <laughs> I just want to say off the bat too, because someone sent me a message on Instagram. I got really paranoid about this. And they were like, I felt alienated by Slurps Up. <laughs> like by the name of it. It's like, I thought it was like an in-joke that I didn't understand. Like what Slurps Up? Like it was like this in-joke. I'm like, I don't. It slurps up, like... <laughs> it's, it's like... It's like surfs up. <laughs> but I'm on a tongue. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming. Oh, the sl it is up. The slurp is up. Um, let me tell you some of my opinions. I am, <laughs> I am sick of parents telling me how much their baby weighs. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that information. People tell you, they'll come up, they, they have a baby and they'll tell you two facts. They'll hit you with two facts. The first fact is it will always be like a name. It's always got like a person's name. <laughs> They'll be like, oh, this is Kevin or whatever. Like, it's always something, there's something like that. It's like a person's name. And then they'll go, Kevin weighs seven pounds, six ounces. I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna cook him. Like, I don't know what you want, I don't know what you want from me here. You tell me the weight of your baby, what, what, what's the square footage of your husband? Like, I don't, what, do I, what, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, you tell me, and also parents tell you, they tell you the weight in pounds and ounces. I don't know if you've checked, but we live under the yoke of the metric system. My whole life I've known the metric system. I don't know what a pound is. The only frame of reference I have is that I know that a pound of weed is a lot of weed. So you're like, oh, I've got a seven pound baby. I'm like... That's a big bump, man. <laughs> Maybe if I smoke the pound of weed and I get the munchies, then I'll cook him up, slurps up. <laughs>
It's up. It is up. Welcome to Slurps Up. Uh, <laughs> this is the best it's ever gone. Some nights it goes real bad. Um, it, it, will, it will get there. It'll, it'll fizzle out. <laughs> it'll fizzle out for sure. That was the only written joke I've got. Um, no, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a baby of my own. <laughs> Except for this fucking minion. <laughs> what? I, I started saying except for this minion and then I remembered that the first thing I did was I fucked the minion. Oh, fucking slurps up here. Um, I, I don't have a baby of my own. It's good, you're probably thinking. Because um, you'll cook him up, you'll crisp him up. You fat. I'm so fat. Um, <laughs> that I'd eat a baby is the joke. That I would eat. That I would eat my own young. Because <laughs> I'm so addicted. To, I would crisp up my bub and then get a crispy. <laughs> sorry, sorry, mate. Just calm down. Um, <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Yes, I don't have a baby. And the reason, the reason I don't have a baby, if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest with you, the reason I don't have a baby is because I'm too worried about the future. I am. I'm just too paranoid about the future. And I'm not talking about climate change, war in Ukraine, that kind of future. I'm talking about what happens if I have a baby and it grows up and then it goes, hey, Dad, I want to be a real estate agent. <laughs> well, you couldn't love it. Like, you couldn't... <laughs> I'd be like, well, you fucking wasted my time, haven't you? Like 18 years down the drain, all that schooling, what a waste. No one's ever loved a real estate agent, not really. No one's ever looked into a real estate agent's eyes and gone, oh, I want to be around you. Like, it's never happened. If, I, if, my, if my kid was a real estate agent, I'd kill it. I'd just, I would crisp him up, I'd crisp him up. Because I think, and I think that I believe this, just welcome to my thoughts. Um, well, I'm slurps up. I know, uh, I believe this. If you, in our society, if you were to murder a real estate agent, like straight up murder in cold blood, that should, you should just have to pay a fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, and, and some people might be thinking, oh, you shouldn't be killing real estate agents. Yeah, I know. I, on a, at the end of the day, I do agree with you. You shouldn't kill them. You shouldn't kill them. It's wrong to kill them. And if you do do it, $1,000 fine max. Like, it should be a similar punishment to killing an ibis. You know what I mean? They're getting bins, yuck. It's like, if you do do it, wash your hands after. Any... Any real estate agents in? <laughs> there never are. Um, <laughs> busy at home pulling the wings off butterflies. <laughs> yeah, but if there are any real estate agents in, just it's a, just a slurps up muck around. It's just a muck around. It's just a joke. I'm just having a joke. But seriously, I underquoted the ticket price. You owe me another ten thousand dollars. And there's a fucking two hundred fifty dollar cleaning fee on your way out. You rat cunts. You rat cunts. Um, Um, does anyone here get jealous of suicidal people in the movies? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Oh. You know? I feel like I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> This feels like a fever dream. I'm really jet lagged as well. I've barely slept. I don't know what's going on. Um, no, you know, <laughs> like in a movie, like you'll see, I'll see a movie. Like I was watching Titanic the other day, topical, RIP. And I was, I was watching Titanic 
And like, because Kate Winslet in one bit, she's like suicidal on the back of the Titanic, you know, she's going to kill herself. And people, in movies, it's always these beautiful cinematic locales and vistas. You know, it's like a, a Wall Street banker suicidal on the top of a Manhattan sky rise. It's always like these beautiful locations. Meanwhile, in real life, I'm suicidal in a friggin' Zambreros. <laughs> You know, I'm just like sitting in a Zambrero's on 40 milligrams of Valium looking at all the other zombies going, what's going, why are we here? What is a Zambrero's? I'm eating a Dos Chappas. It's a taco that's got a hard shell and a soft shell together and it tastes like shit. I need Leonardo DiCaprio to save me. I've got mental health. <laughs> I got mental health stuff. I do, no, slurps up, let's talk about it. I... No, we gotta talk about mental health. Um... Ah, oh. <laughs> uh, um, there we are. I... No, cos I have, I have two... I have two big severe mental health issues in my life. One is crippling anxiety, like panic attacks and stuff, and the other is, um, depression. Uh, the big D. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, got, I feel like I've got a sound. That's not it. That's... I, um, shush. Um, I... I, I, ha I, like I have, I, I do this thing, like here's how my mental health manifests in my mind, right? I do this thing, it's called catastrophizing apparently. And like, it, it happened to me the other day. I was in a Woolworths, thank you. Um, I was in a Woolworths shopping centre buying some strawberry ice cream because I love my straw. Anyone tells you Greg doesn't love straw, you can tell them he, you're a fucking liar. I was buying some strawberry ice cream because I wanted to go home and eat my strawberry ice cream and watch The Last of Us. Um, yeah, there's no joke here. It's just a good show. I want to give them a plug. I just love uh, HBO. They're a great network. Home box office. Check them out. They need the views. Um, good on them. Um, so I wanted to eat my strawberry ice cream, watch The Last of Us. And I, here's the problem, right, is I got the strawberry ice cream and it was, the, the, the strawberry ice cream had been tampered with. The seal was broken on the strawberry ice cream. And I, cause I catastrophized, right? My paranoia, my anxiety in my head immediately was like, oh yeah, this has been poisoned with cyanide. <laughs> like that's what's happened. Like someone has poisoned this strawberry ice cream with cyanide. And if you eat this strawberry ice cream, you're gonna die tonight. That's what my anxiety thought. And, but then my depression chimed in and went, yeah, but I really want to eat some strawberry ice cream. And if we die, bonus. Like, go out doing what you love. Like, it's the last, it's the last episode of Last of Us too. Like, what do you got? <laughs> you got nothing in the pipeline after this. So I ate all of the strawberry ice cream, stressed. Like I just didn't enjoy it at all. Like I just ate all, like spoonful after spoonful of strawberry ice cream, like checking my pulse. And I wasn't stressed because of the exciting adventures of Joel and Ellie as they escaped the clickers in the Boston QZ. Last of Us, seriously, check it out. All that'll make sense. I was stressed because I thought I was gonna die from eating the strawberry ice cream. And this is true, this is 100% what I did. I ate all of it except for this much because I'm a stupid fucking idiot. And my brain literally went, what if the poison like, seep to the bottom and if you don't eat that last bit you won't get the full poison it's like how when you you know when you don't have a bottle opener and you got a bottle of beer and you just smash it on rocks and then you just drink it and you just don't drink this much of the beer because you figure all the glass bits will have settled in the bottom my dad taught me that um he did that was the only thing he ever taught me and then he ran off into the river um he, he He's still there. Um, he just he just lives in the river. It's not a sad story. Um, oh, I got a river dad. Um, you, <laughs> I just thought of something and it's not funny, but I'm gonna say it because I want to. You've heard of river dance. I've got a river dad. I 
feel afraid. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> what, uh, where was I? Um, yeah, so, that, yeah, and I was like so paranoid about this strawberry ice cream, like I left that much in. The thing is, I, I'm like, I'm literally paranoid in my brain that I'm gonna die from po cyanide poisoning on the strawberry ice cream, that I didn't stop to think, maybe I'm gonna die because I eat a liter of strawberry ice cream every night. Like it was a liter, I ate a liter of strawberry ice cream. And I'm walking around going, oh fuck, I feel sick. Like I feel, I think it's, that's the poison. It's a fucking liter of strawberry ice cream. Like if I, if I was in revolutionary France, I'd be on the guillotine. I'd be looking up at the blade going, oh, sorry, the blade's a bit dirty. Could you give it a wipe? I don't want to get tetanus on my stump. I would look up at it too, it'd be fun. Um, um, <laughs> that sucks that I can just do that and then people go, oh yeah. <laughs> like I can write a joke for ages and then I'll just go, and go oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time you clap, I just have this urge to pick up the new. <laughs> It's, it's like a Pavlov's dog thing now. Every time I hear like, oh, it's all the fuck with the minion. Yeah! Oh, the fuck with the minion! Do you love me yet? Do you love me? Oh, my ear went a weird. Um, <laughs> so, I had a mental breakdown. I did, I, had, I did last year, I had a full proper mental breakdown, like a bad one. Like I was like, literally like I couldn't function, I couldn't do anything. And I went to a doctor, I went to a GP and I went in and he goes, oh, you hear about mental health stuff? And I'm like, no, why does everyone assume that? I'm here because I've been Googling it and I'm pretty sure I have 17 different types of cancer. And he said, that sounds like mental health stuff to the age. Um, and then here, here's the thing, right? He, I said that I was paranoid that I had colon cancer because that was the latest thing that I'd looked up. I was like so paranoid I had colon cancer. Um, and I was like, I've definitely got it. I've definitely got to read an article about it. I've got colon cancer, bowel cancer. And he goes, well, we can do, we can do a physical exam. You know, I can put the glove on and get the finger out and we can do a exam um, in the back <laughs> passage. And I think he was sort of saying this because he thought, oh, that'll sort of calm me down and go, oh, maybe I don't need, <laughs> maybe I don't have bowel cancer. I was like, no, no, I'll, I, I love to be proven right. Um, <laughs> and I was like, please do the exam. I would love to find out that I have cancer and be right. And, <laughs> and this, is, this is true, this is, this is what he did. He goes, okay, well, uh, first of all, take off your pants, get up on the bed and let's take a look at your bum. And that's the exact way he said it. <laughs> Like it felt weird, like he goes, let's take a look at your bum. Like he said, bum, like that. Like said, and I was like, you're a doctor, say rectum, sir. Like, it doesn't sound official. Like it doesn't sound official. When you're just like, bum, okay. And, then, uh, and so I got up on the bed and then he put the glove on and did the thing. And he was, he was, doing, he was going for quite a while, like really doing a thorough exam, doing all this and then, I was just in there for a while, and at a certain point I went, oh, how, how you traveling, chief? Like, what's... How's, your, how's it all coming along? And then he just went, oh, yeah. I can see here, yeah, oh, yeah. I can see here, you are mental. And I went, are you a real doctor? And he went, nah, and he pulled his finger out and then he ran off and he's so small, he's like that big. And he's like, he was so slippery and I tried to grab him, but he went down a storm water drain. I put the hose down there and I tried to hose him out, but he's just like, ah! It's the healthcare system, it's fucked. So I went, to an, I went to another doctor. Um, I went to a psychiatrist. I went to a psychiatrist, actually. I did. I, I went to a psychiatrist. And the thing is, I thought when you go to a psychiatrist, it was going to be like in the movies, right? Like, it's like talk therapy. It's like psychoanalysis. You know, you uncover rocks of truth. 
like about who you are and you know it's deep seated stories about your childhood you know like oh you know um the, the reason i've got depression is because my dad never loved me or uh, you know the reason i've um, got anxiety is because my mum had something called placenta envy because i ate my fetal twin in the womb <laughs> not not that stuff like that like I never ate my fetal twin in the world. I didn't I never had a fetal twin, but I would have eaten it if I had a fetal twin, because I'm, I'm a... No, but like... It pisses me off, because that's the only time you can eat fetal twin and get away with it. It's the forbidden flavour. You can't get it anymore. Me, get a fetal twin. Like a... Uh, yeah, um... But I thought it was gonna be like The Sopranos. Like I thought I was gonna be like a Tony Soprano type dude. You know, I'm not Tony, I've never killed anyone, but I'm a big guy and I love Gabagool. Um, and like Tony Soprano, I also love The Sopranos. He loves his family, I love the show. It's HBO, it's like, it's where it all started. Um, but I, I thought it was going to be like talk therapy, talking out your problems and covering all these truths. But in reality, what happens is you sit down and your psychiatrist fires up the bubble jet printer and prints out a piece of paper that says, module two, back from the blues. And blues is like sort of word art and it's spelled with a Z. And there's a little clip art saxophone on it. That, this is... And that's... <laughs> um... <laughs> um... <laughs> that's really what I got. Like, I was in there, and I, like, I, you know, I don't want to get two dark slopes up, but I was... This, this was, like, at the lowest point of my life. Like, I was legitimately, like, suicidal. I was, at the lowest point of my life, I was in the office. I literally just burst into tears as soon as I got in there. I was shaking, and she was like, oh... Get back from the blues, come on. And just like... <laughs> <laughs> printing out, printing out back from the blues on the bubble jet and it was out of like coloured ink and then she had to get a cartridge. <laughs> and then she gave me this piece of paper and I remember like holding it, shaking and like tears falling onto the paper. And I remember just staring at the back from, and I remember staring at the Z and the little drop shadow behind blues and just looking at the saxophone and I did perk up a fair bit. <laughs> like, like, I was like... Cos I legitimately, like, the first thought that entered my head, and I'm not kidding, when I saw that was, I got a new bit. Um, <laughs> but Back From The Blues, this is true, what Back From The Blues is, is a list, right? So it costs like, it costs like 400 bucks to go to a psychiatrist, like 400 bucks. And I got a list of things, it was a, a list of things to do to feel happy. Like it was a list of things you can do to feel happy. Just a, a activities, fun activities list. There was, and there was literally 400 of them. So like a dollar a thing, right? <laughs> and I just like, this is real. I just want to read out some of the things that were on Back From The Blues. Just a couple of them, just to give you an idea of what we're, what we're talking about here. So I, I was sitting so there, Back From The Blues, list of things to when you feel happy. When I was I had suicidal, the depression and anxiety. Uh, number 101, rub some moisturiser on your hands. <laughs> I am having daily panic attacks. The last thing I need right now is to feel all greasy, you know? Like I don't want to feel... My hands are as slick as you like. They are honey slick. I've already... I don't work properly. I just, the only calluses I have are from playing Elden Ring on PS5. I don't need moisturiser. 102, and this is true, this is 102, 101, rub moisture on your hands, 102, look at a tree. <laughs> I've seen them. <laughs> They're all right. Give me some Valium. I need diazepam. It's a, like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Number 103, my eyes popped out of my head when I read 103. 101 was... Rub moisture on your hands. One or two was look at a tree. These are real. I'm quoting from Back from the Blues. One or two was look at a tree. And one or three, and I'm not making this up, 
fly a plane. <laughs> There's got to be some middle ground somewhere. There's got to be something. <laughs> There's got to be something in between looking at a tree and flying a plane. I don't have a plane. I don't know where to get a plane. I don't know how to fly a plane. I'm depressed as fuck. Do not put me behind the wheel of a plane. Um, sorry, I'm actually going to do something. This is true. Um, we'll be back to slips up in a minute. Um, but I, I do. This is true. I took money to do like paid promotion. Um, HBO Last of Us is free. That was just and Minion, Minions as well. That's not. I'm not paid. I haven't. I haven't been paid to fuck this Minion. I. I, I <laughs> As I was bending down to pick up the minion, I went, don't do this. <laughs> but then I was just went, I just do it and just be done. <laughs> it really annoys me that I know I'll fuck the minion at least twice more in this show. And I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want to be that kind of comedian that gets up here and just fucks the minion. <laughs> and it's getting worse every time. Um, no, I do. I have, to, I have to do ads. I have to do ads for some products. Um, I just literally do. I took money to do some. So, if you just give me one second, I'll just do this quick. Part. Hey, Dad. Can I have a croissant? Sure thing, son. You can have a croissant. Oh, cool. Can I also have uh, a Danish, an apple Danish? Hey, you can have an apple Danish. Oh, great. Number, number 193 on um, Back From The Blues, number 193 was attend a stand-up comedy performance. <laughs> but doctor, I am Pagliacci. <laughs> That's actually a pretty high level joke, so. Um, no, um, but uh, number... Number 168 on Back From The Blues was Tell A Joke. <laughs> um, I got a joke for you. What is, what is it? What, what, is, what is a pescatarian? What is that? No, I'm asking, I'm genuinely asking. What is a pescatarian? Does someone know? Eats fish. Eats fish? Just fish? No, vegetables. No, they eat vegetables. And fish. And fish. No, red meat. No red meat, but like oysters and stuff, they eat oysters? Yeah. So fish? <laughs> seafood. 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 
<laughs> Prawns, oysters, fish? That doesn't sound like seafood. That sounds like bloody A plus food to me. <laughs> you just got roasted, you fucking idiot! <laughs> Um, no, this is, uh, I saw the other day, oh, serious news. There's a trial coming up in America. It's weird, I don't know if it was weird. This trial, they, they're going to try a, a bag of Cheetos. Oh, wait. Uh, did I say Cheetos? I meant a former president, a Donald Trump. Um, yeah. I just know that every man I kill, the farther away from home I feel. It makes you think. No, but they, um... They tried Donald Trump in the highest court of the land. Which a lot of people think is the Supreme Court. But if you think that, you are dead wrong. Because there's a court higher than the Supreme Court, and that is the Barbecue Meat Lovers Court. He like a glove. Um, and did, oh, sorry, did someone say something up the back there? Did someone just heckle me? I just swear, I swear I heard someone say something. Did, did, did somebody say KFC? I don't care! <laughs> Getting into a political discussion. <laughs> Did that? I'm banned from Twitter now. Um, that sucks. <laughs> that joke sucks, and I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do that fucking joke. Does anyone else here have a cop? A cop dad? A cop for a dad? I got a cop for a dad. I had a cop for a dad. My dad was a cop. This is true. He was a policeman. He was a queen. He was in the Queensland Police. My dad. Um, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, good. Okay, let's give it up for the quiz. <laughs> Come on, guys! <laughs> give it up! <laughs> and he's here tonight! I... Um, no, I... <laughs> oh, my God. My dad, my dad was a cop. He's retired now. He's a retired cop. Um, he grew a pineapple the other day, so... You know, there are some good ones. They're not all bad. No, but like, people, just genuinely, people might think that, you know, because my dad was a cop when I was growing up, that I'd be one of those, like, back to blue, blue lives matter kind of people. You know, like, yeah, but people, that you know, that I'm supportive of the cops, I love... No, it couldn't be further from the truth. Genuinely, couldn't be further from the truth. I, I forget, I do. I know what the cops are like. I hate the cops. I grew up around cops. No, I've seen, I've seen what they're like. I've, like, we, all the barbecues, all cops, you know, like, fucking, they vilify people, they harass people, they victimise people. They're always like, oh, you got to clean your room. Like... <laughs> Nintendo 64. It's like, fuck you, Dad. A cab. A cab for life. <laughs> Fucking cunt. I kill, I kill cops on sight. <laughs> if there's a cop in here, watch out. Minion. I'm just saying the word minion. <laughs> this fucking minion has ruined the show. This fucking minion. Um, my dad, I'll tell you a story about my, my cop dad. One day he was out when I was a kid. Uh, I was like 11. He was out copping. He was copping around. Doing all this cop stuff. And he pulled someone over. 
And he pulled this guy over for speeding or something, and he was just going to give him a warning, but then the guy <laughs> rolled down his window and then immediately threw a sausage roll <laughs> at my dad. <laughs> and cops are not known for their sense of humour. Like, they're not... <laughs> my dad, is, you know, was a very humorless man. Growing up. Like, to give you an idea of the kind of angry, humorless man that, that, that is, was my dad, He's mellowed out now, he's growing that pineapple, but... <laughs> I remember once, when I was a similar age, I was about 12 or something, he, he bought two two-litre bottles of Pepsi Max, and at the time there were prizes under the lid, and I wanted to see if we'd won a prize, so I opened both bottles of Pepsi Max straight away, and then Dad was like, I can't believe you did that! They're gonna lose their fizz! <laughs> And then he went and sat on the back steps smoking cigarettes and stared at the sun for an hour. Um, <laughs> so this guy threw some control on my dad. When I first heard about it, when he told me about this when I was 11, I was like, yeah, good, fucking ACAB. Like, <laughs> good on him. But then I was also like, but what happened to the sausage roll? Like, we've got a soldier down out in the field. <laughs> and... But here's the thing, right, because my dad decided he was going to charge this guy with assault. He did. He was like, I'm going to charge this guy with assault. He's like, that's assault. You've hit me with a weapon. I'm charging with it. And he did. He took, he took the guy back to the station and charged him with assaulting a police officer with a weapon. He did. And the other cops evidently did have a sense of humour. Because they all started making fun of my dad. And he was, like, filling out the police report. And they kept leaning over his shoulder going, oh, make sure you tell them they've been in the hot box all day. And it was really hard. He was like, so it's Assault. You use assault. And then they're like, oh, lucky it wasn't a 4 and 20 traveller pie. I would have to call the cert team. Those things like napalm. My dad was getting more and more pissed off for the guys making fun of him. And then he went to go to the toilet. And when he got up, he checked his gun belt and his gun was gone. And there was just a sausage roll in there. <laughs> Drop the charges. Um, <laughs> he did. Um, number uh, 63. Number 63 on Back from the Blues is research a topic of interest on the uh, on the internet. <laughs> I wasn't looking at pornos. Wasn't looking at pornos. I've had an erection for years. No, I. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I uh, need a price check on a better joke. Um. Uh, no, re research a topic of interest on the internet. I looked up guillotines. I think they're fun. Um, no, I looked up. I looked up snakes, and this is true. I looked up snakes. Um, and do you know snakes? Well, like the deadliest genre of snake, like not, it's not the specific snake, but like a whole subgroup of snakes, are the ones that like in the ocean, what are those snakes called that swim in the ocean? Like the sea snakes. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, they're deadly as fuck, they swim in the ocean, I give them an A+. Plus. I Sorry, I've, I've, I've got to do another ad, so just bear with me.
That was an ad for um, Buller Thickened Cream. <laughs> Fuck. Um, sorry, it was actually Paul's. <laughs> now, slaps up, everyone. Come on. Slip those noodles, mate. Good on you. Yeah, good on you. Oh, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Little dog. Slips up. Oh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, people. It, it wouldn't. It might not come as a surprise. To, for people to know um, that I am the kind of person that at any given moment I have a complaint going with various ombuds. <laughs> like, I love an ombudsman complaint. I don't know what an ombud is, but man, I get it done. I am, um, fuck, this show's running so long. I shouldn't have fucked that minion. <laughs> I shouldn't have fucked that minion that many times. I. <laughs> I want to tell you a story, I want to try to tell the abridged version of when I made a complaint to an ombudsman, right? And to tell that story, I have to go back to sort of, at the start of the story is I was about to get a colonoscopy for my mental health. <laughs> um, which is normal if you think about it. Um, no, because my, I, I went to another doctor, because that other doctor, he was down the stormwater drain, I couldn't get him out, they locked the drains, the council locked them. Went to another doctor, she was really helpful, and she said, look, we'll get you on medication, we'll be like, We'll talk about your mental health, we'll get you on a mental health care plan, see the psychiatrist, all that. But, you know, if you're worried about bowel cancer, you're, you know, you're, you're 39, um, you eat like shit, um, maybe we can get you a colonoscopy, you know? And then I went on a wait list to get a colonoscopy. Now, while I was on the wait list, I had to go up to Sydney for work. Um, and I was up there on this um, thing that I was filming up there and I was, I was, um, I was up there for about two months and just a side note too, I want to say this, I don't understand or care about the Sydney-Melbourne rivalry. <laughs> like people, like there's this big, like oh, maybe it's because I'm from Brisbane originally, but like people in Melbourne are like, oh, Sydney people, oh, they're all like, oh, we're busy and we're <laughs> businessmen and we're doing cocaine and like, Sydney people are like, oh, Melbourne, oh, I'm going to have a latte and you know, we'll go to the park. <laughs> like I don't think any of you from either city have been to other cities before. I like all cities, every city on earth is exactly the same. Everywhere you go, it's just stressed out cunts going to the shops. That's all it is. We're stressed and we're going to the shops. We're going to Sambreros and we don't know why. So I was in um I was in Sydney, the better of the two cities. Um beautiful harbour. I I was up there, and so I'm waiting to have my colonoscopy. Like I had to, what, what I was going to have to do is my colonoscopy was coming up. It was, a, it was a week from the day that uh, I was up in Sydney. I had to, in a week's time, I had to fly to Melbourne, get the colonoscopy, fly back to Sydney, and then continue working. Right? It was like FIFO, but colon. Um, <laughs> and I was, I was up there. Had a week to go before my colonoscopy big trip, and. I woke up one morning feeling very, very nauseous, and this is gross, but I have to say it, I threw up brown. Like, I threw up, and it was all brown. And I, yeah. <laughs> Man, I fucked a minion before, and I, uh, get over it. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 went, I went to a doctor, I went to a GP up in Sydney, um, and she goes, what's the problem? And I said, I threw up brown. Um, I, she said, what's the problem? I said, I threw up brown. She goes, did you eat anything brown? And then I said, I did eat two packets of Oreos last night. And she said, that's pretty brown. Oh, my little baby. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, and so, and, and, and she said, look, are you, are you, you're getting a colonoscopy next week, are you? And I said, yeah, I'm getting a colonoscopy next week. And then she said, well, I'll send a referral to the colonoscopy clinic in Melbourne and get them to do a gastroscopy at the same time. It's just as easy to do both. Like, that's the camera down the throat. So colonoscopy is up the ass. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. I never have. Um, colonoscopy is down the mouth. 
<laughs> and she said, like, the technical term, I think, is a spit roast, so it's like, it's too... Um, and I... <laughs> I hate myself. And I... <laughs> I, um... She said, we, it's just as easy to do that. She sent an email to the colonoscopy clinic and said, hey, Greg threw up brown. Can you do a gastroscopy at the same time as the colonoscopy, right? And then I went... It, like, I left the GP's office. I got a call like 20 minutes later, if that. It was the colonoscopy place, the gut doctor. And she was on the line going, hey, Greg, we just got your referral that you threw up brown and you, you want a gastroscopy. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I keep saying it threw up brown. <laughs> um, this is the worst this has ever gone. I... <laughs> And she goes, hey, you could come in right now if you want and get the gastroscopy, like, immediately, today, this second. We can clear our schedule and have you in. And I said, I actually can't. I'm in, um, I'm in Sydney and you're in Melbourne. I can, I can probably get a flight tomorrow, you know, if you think it's important. And she was like, well, hmm, it is important, but what I would suggest is that you go to the emergency room now, immediately. Where, whatever, drop what you're doing and go there now. And I said, why? And she goes, well, did you, did, when you threw up, did it look like coffee, like ground coffee? And I said, that's exactly what it looked like. And she goes, yeah, that's blood. She said, that's internal bleeding. And I said, is that bad? <laughs> and then she said, I don't want to alarm you. And then I knew what she was about to say was definitely going to alarm. She goes, I don't want to alarm you, but you might die. <laughs> And I was somewhat alarmed. <laughs> she was like, this is serious. But if I'm being honest, there was joy mixed in there as well. And not in a morbid way, just in a way that I was like, yeah, for ages I've been telling everyone, oh, I've got cancer, I've got illnesses, I've got things wrong. And they're like, no, it's your mental health. I'm like, ha, ah, suck shit, my friends and family. I was right. I am going to die. I'm rotten from the inside out. I was whistling all the way to the hospital. And my obituary would say he died doing what he loved, being correct. <laughs> and so I went to the hospital and they, and it's a bit of a life hack for you. If you have internal bleeding, they rush you through. Um, no waiting for Greggy. Uh, <laughs> I went, hey, they said I'm bleeding internally. And they were like, get in. <laughs> we want you in. Um, and they did a bunch of tests. They did a bunch of tests to find out if it was bad internal bleeding or okay internal bleeding. It, it turns out it was okay internal bleeding. Like, they were like, it's probably an ulcer or something like that. It's not, you're not going to die. You're not going to die you know, now, obviously you will die one day. Um, which is weird, like, they, they said that to everyone as you leave the hospital, they're like, you will die one day, so... Maybe don't come back. Um, that's what you get with a healthcare system funded by a Liberal government. Um, oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Uh, um... <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I went back down to Melbourne, I got my colonoscopy and my gastroscopy at the same time. The cameras met in the middle, they shook hands like at the channel tunnel. Um, and it was fine, it was all clear. I, I woke up, I woke up and um, I was like, what's going on? And they said, oh, your, your stomach, it was just a bit of inflammation, it's fine, it's nothing serious. Your colon couldn't be better. You got a clean colon. You got the cleanest colon we've ever seen. The doctors all came over. So the doctors like, come, everybody come here. And all the nurses and the healthcare staff, they clapped for me. They stood over, they clapped for me. They put me in stirrups and drove me around the Broadmeadows Hospital in a little golf buggy. Just went, look at this colon. You could eat off that colon. You could growl him out. You could growl out his bowel. And Dan Andrews came over and growled me out on a golf buggy. I sat in a golf buggy and that's what you get in a Labor government. <laughs> um, so I went home to Sydney, I went back to Sydney and I was like, I'm gonna celebrate. And here's the problem in my life, right? When things are going bad, when I'm depressed, I go, fuck this, everything sucks, I'm gonna get mackers. And then when things are going really well, I'm like, you should treat yourself, get some mackers. <laughs> And I was ready to treat myself because my colon was a clean bill of health so my stupid animal brain went, that means eating bulk McDonald's is good. Um, you've done that so far and it's worked really well. So I, I, I ordered of um, um, 
And I ordered from Menu Log, I ordered a huge McDonald's feast. And it took two and a half hours, maybe even three hours to arrive. It took ages. I had to get up the next day at like 6 a.m. for work. And I was waiting for three hours for my McDonald's. Finally it arrived. Everything was all fucked up. There was, the food was cold. The ice and the drink had melted. There was a fry strewn about the bag. All around the bag. One of the burgers was missing. One of the burgers wasn't even there. The McChicken didn't have the bacon, didn't have the cheese, because I'd asked for extra bacon and cheese. I know, it was the worst thing that's ever happened to anyone. The, the double quarter pounder, it was askew. It was like, it was askew, it was off to the side. Poorly put together. And I won't tell you how many burgers I, I'd ordered it. A gentleman doesn't tell. The nuggets, the nuggets were cold. It was four burgers and <laughs> I was livid. I was like, I'm gonna do something about this. And then I sat down, I thought, I've got, I've got to calm down. So I ate all the McDonald's. <laughs> Calm down. And they went, right, what can I do? And I, I, I sent them an email to menu, I got you, or you fucked up a hole, or you gotta give me a refund. And they refused. They straight up said, we're not gonna give you a refund. And the reason they said, we're not gonna give you a refund, they replied to me straight away. It was like a, through the app kind of thing. And the reason they said they weren't gonna give me a refund is because I'd made too many complaints about previous orders. And that fucking pissed me off because I had made complaints about previous orders, but they were all legitimate complaints. This isn't like an Uber Eats situation where I made a lot of fraudulent complaints. Because I was on Uber Eats and I was getting McDonald's and then one day they legitimately left off a cheeseburger and I went, oh, item was missing. And then it just gives you a drop down and it goes, cheeseburger, and then it goes, ding, refund automatically. Like literally that second automatic refund. And I went, I am going to abuse this. <laughs> And then I was just ordering like crazy over the course of like two weeks, just getting crazy. McDonald's going, oh, burger didn't arrive, chips didn't arrive. And one day, like Icarus, I flew too close to the sun. I got like a, a family feast. I got so much food, enough to feed a family. I just went through, just going Big Mac didn't arrive, quarter pounder didn't arrive, fries didn't arrive. And like I said, all these things didn't arrive. The only thing I said that arrived was a small diet Coke. Because something would have had to have arrived. <laughs> and I got the refund, but then the next day they were like, it was a detected suspicious activity and your account has been banned. So now I'm banned from Uber Eats and Uber, they're linked somehow. <laughs> it's for the best. Um, Cause I don't support, I don't support the gig economy. They fucking, they don't pay their workers. It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking, anyway, so I switched to menu log. Uh, <laughs> Now, many log were fucking me over, and a normal person would have gone to bed because they had to get up at 6 a.m. the next day. Not me. I, and I did do this. I just want to stress how much I did do this. I went on to the New South Wales Fair Trade Commission website. And I want to be clear that I didn't do this for a bit. I didn't think, oh, this could be a funny bit in my show. I did it because I was mad at the system and I'm a hero. And so I went onto the New South Wales Fair Trade Commission website. I really did. I had to upload like passport information. Like it was like a crazy long process. There's documentation. I, I submitted all that and I had to wait like four months for justice and then one day I was out walking I was walking my dog the spaghetti dog the noodle dog you saw before his name is Bird I was walking my dog and I was holding a bag of my dog's shit and I got a call from someone called Nathan at the New South Wales Fair Trade Commission it was a private number I normally don't answer private numbers because I've got a lot of debts but there's one day I thought I'll answer this and I answered it and he was like, it's Nathan from the New South Wales Fair Trade Commission. I put on like my man voice that I do when I talk to men and I'm like, oh yeah, thanks mate. Yes, um, oh yes, I, I don't have depression. And <laughs> I fit in with you. Um, I've never fucked a minion. I've never, ever fucked a minion. Um, and so I was, um, I was talking to Nathan and he goes, are you still interested in pursuing that uh, $48 um, <laughs> me, um, menu log refund. And I said, yeah, absolutely, I am. Uh, absolutely. And he's like, okay, well, then this is the next step. We're going to do all this. Part. And I'm like, yes, I will enter mediation if need be. I'm like, I can send the necessary documentation. He goes, well, the next step we're going to do is we're, I'm going to contact menu log through, you know, the, um, the official channels and let them know that proceedings have commenced. <laughs> no greater sentence I've ever heard in my life. 
I'm going to contact menu log to let them know proceedings have commenced. And I was over the moon. I was so happy. I hung up. I was walking back with my dog. I was rushing home because I couldn't wait for my partner to get home from work so I could so I could tell her that I was now embroiled in a legal dispute with menu log over a $48 McDonald's meal that I never told her about. I knew she was going to be really proud of me. Um, and before she even got home from work, I got an email from menu log saying, here's your money back. And, and he, cause that, the ombudsman, the ombudsman had put the fear of God into him. Either that or they've just seen the email and gone, just give this fat cunt his money. Like, just do it and be done with it. But I fought the system, I did it for you, I did it for all the kids in Australia. Thank you. I did it for every kid who's ever wanted to grow up and get a McChicken burger and then get a second McChicken patty and take that second McChicken patty and dip it in the sauce and pretend it's a big nugget. I fought for you. I fought for justice and I won. And I'm not kidding. I took that $48 and I immediately spent it on menu log. Um, I gotta do one more ad. <clears throat> by something I saw at the Red Bank Plaza shopping center. <laughs> um, number 156 in Back From The Blues was asking older relatives questions about their life. So I talked to my, my granddad. Um, my grandfather, he was a... Um, uh, he was, he was a, a, in, in the Korean War, not the World War II, he was in the Korean War, he was in the Navy, he worked on the boats. Um, he was a sailor. Well, not a sailor. What is it called in the... <laughs> in the Navy? Like, you know when you're, um... <laughs> you, you, what was that word? Like... <laughs> Seaman? Oh! Uh, more like bloody jizz, boys! <laughs> Greg, 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 Greg. I'm gonna fucking kill Greg. you. Greg, Greg, Greg. Um, number 203 and back from the blues. Number 203 and back from the blues was taking children places. And this, this is, I guess, the point of the show is like, because I told, I, to, this, I tried to tell the cops, like, I. <laughs> I'm on back from the blues, like, because there's a school near my house. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm like through the bars going like, I got back from the blues, kids. I got depression. You got to come with me. Just, fucking 
fucking ACAB. They don't understand. They don't understand. <laughs> um, thanks for coming and slurps up. I yeah. just walked away. <laughs> No, there's, there's still more. Um, I do, I do have to like just say a serious thing at the end because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want to bum anyone out. But slips up and stuff. But, um, <laughs> but like, I just want to do like this show doesn't have a point, <laughs> I suppose. Um, apart from your minions are cool. Um, minions are actually fucking cool, man. Like they're probably one of the coolest types of yellow um, round things. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it would fizzle out. I told you it would fizzle out. Um, I no. I this the serious point of the, the, the show. It's not the point of the show. It's just a thing I want to say at the end. Is that I, I genuinely did have like a bad mental health uh, problem last year. Like it, I've had mental health problems all, for a lot, long time, and last year was real bad, and it was fucking awful. And all the things like. I talked about and made fun of and stuff like they did help you know going to the psychiatrist really did help you know my friends and family really did help the doctor the gym, my GP I've got a great GP and she really, really helped me but um le legitimately the thing that helped me more than anything else in the world and I'm, I mean this so sincerely is um Valium um <laughs> no I just I want to come on Big Pharma's had a bad run and I just want to I want to tell like Valium is a great drug it is honestly such a great drug it's called diazepam and if you can get on it and take it every day it will help you so much and like no I just want to be sincere at the end here so because I take Valium every day every single day and I feel great all the time and people say oh but you'll get addicted to Valium <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh no, I'm addicted to happiness. Oh, what a shame. What a fucking shame. That's like, oh yeah, but like you'll have to, you know, as you, as you get addicted, you need to take a higher and higher dose to feel the same effects. And like, oh, so you're telling me that the biggest problem with being addicted to Valium is I have to take more of the thing I love? Oh no. Like, oh, it's fucking great. It's awesome. You don't have to shit anymore. It's so good. And back from the blues on Valium works. Okay, rub some moisturise your hands on 40 milligrams of Valium. That feels cool. Going out looking at a tree high on Valium. That tree never looks so damn good. Flying a plane on Valium is very fun. It's very fun to do. And the, pe the passengers are screaming. They hate it. They're screaming. Give them some Valium. They'll love it too. And that's the point of the show. Is that you can take Valium every day and feel as good as me. I love Valium. Living on a dream Sometimes Living.